Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love it for you to hit that subscribe button. I'm Dr. Lyndon Walker, and I have been using R for 25 years. On this channel, I present a mixture of R, statistics, research, and other technical bits and pieces. So today, what I wanted to tell you about is a new program called Quarto. So Quarto lets you produce beautiful technical documents using Python, R, Julia, or Observable. So this is a little bit like R Markdown on steroids for those of you who have used R Markdown. Today we're going to be looking at how to get started with Quarto. I'll show you how to download it and work through the tutorials and just the basics of producing really nice documents. So here we are on Quarto.org and if we scroll down they've given us some nice little examples. So here in R, Python, Julia, and Observable. I'm going to be working through using R because that is my software of choice. For those of you that have used Markdown, you can see that it is following a fairly similar kind of pattern. Uh, one thing that I really do like is that the way that they caption and label their chunks is done separately uh, and so that's quite a nice change. And we can see that the document that it's producing, certainly in this very basic one, looks pretty similar to what we might produce in our Markdown. So if we scroll back up and hit Get Started, then we can download uh, Linux, Mac, or Windows, whatever we need, and download that. It's a very quick download. And the install process is also very simple. Uh, I think it, other than choosing where to locate it, I don't think it really asks for anything else. So click on that, download, install it, and then jump into your IDE for whichever language you are going to be working on. So we are going to be using our studio. And here in the getting started, that then leads us into some nice tutorials. So if we scroll down, we can see that they give us a, what they call Hello Quarto. So an example with some penguins. Uh, if you haven't, as a reminder, if you haven't got the latest version of RStudio, uh, they encourage you to do that. There's been some quite useful upgrades over the past six months or so. So that's just good habit to be doing anyway. And then we can download this Hello QMD document. So the QMD is the uh, file suffix for a quarto document. And so download that, and then we will jump over into our studio and have a look. So here we are in our studio. We've opened our Hello QMD file, and you'll notice that just this window within our studio looks a little bit different. There's some similar things. So we've still got our Run button. Uh, but we have a render button here, which is what we use to be able to turn our QMD file into whatever we would like to make. We also can flick between source and visual. So a little bit like if we were working on something like HTML, we can work on it using our markdown, but we can also work on it using our different bits and pieces here. So if we want to go bold or italics or change the headers, put in links, um, do various bits of formatting, add code bo blocks, bullets and numbering, inserting a table, all of those things that we previously would have been having to type some code for, we can work with just by using those. So that's really nice. Makes life a lot easier if you are used to typing in your Markdown code. It will take a little bit of getting used to if you haven't used Markdown before, though. I would really recommend starting here. It just makes life so much easier. Being able to flick between source and visual also really helps with checking that what we've put in, so things like hyperlinks, things like code chunks, positioning of images is all happening how we would like it to. Over here on the right, we've also got an outline so we can skip between headings when we're writing a much bigger document that's going to be really handy for being able to jump between chapters. 
So this is all of their code. And if we go and hit render, then it will produce our uh, document. And this one that we're making here is an HTML. So we'll hit render. And just like with an R markdown, you'll see that it processes the code, it gives us an error, and the error here is that we have not installed the library Palmer Penguins. So we can see here one of the libraries being used is Palmer Penguins, and I have not installed that yet, so that's okay. We can jump over to packages, we can install, there's our Palmer Penguins. We can whack install. And now when we render, it does a little bit of thinking. And here is the viewer with our HTML of Palmer Penguins. We can see that it has active hyperlinks in it. Let's put a nice uh, plot in there got a code chunk so largely things we could have done before uh, but we just seeing it presented in a slightly nicer fashion as we work into bigger documents that's going to get better and better it has produced the html file and so if we open that up in a web browser we can see how it looks like not in a viewer window but actually how it was formatted and there it is, uh, just like what we saw in the tutorial. So if we want to produce our own QMD documents, then all we need to do is go back to our studio. We go File, New, and we can see that we now have Quarto Documents and Quarto Presentations in there as new options in our studio. So if we hit Quarto Document, then we get a window very, very similar to what we did with our regular R markdown. So we can choose HTML, PDF, Word. Uh, we can do presentations. So we've got Beamer and PowerPoint in there. And we can also produce interactive documents. So coming back to our getting started in Quarto, we've downloaded the Hello QMD. We've had a bit of an explore. We saw that we can use the render button in order to render our HTML file, since that's what we were producing. We've also got this option where we can tick render on save, and so that will produce an uh, updated document as we're saving. We saw that we can produce HTML, PDF, Word, uh, as well as presentations. Uh, and of course, within these, if we're producing HTML, of course, we can make that a website, and we can also do uh, kind of more of a book style with our PDFs and our Word documents. And that outline box, really handy for that. Coming down, we saw that we can flick between the visual and the source. And we have the, the bar here with the different types of formatting if we are on the visual option. And then we've got just a few little technical details. So... Uh, the YAML, Y-A-M-L, is uh, one of those funny uh, open source recursive acronyms. So YAML stands for, what is it? YAML ain't markdown language. Uh, so of course, it's using its name in its explanation of its name. Uh, and all that just is telling us that it is a uh, form of language. And so we can set up a title like this. We can work with code chunks just like we can in our Markdown. Uh, and again, of course, if you haven't used our Markdown, uh, a code chunk is just a section of code where we start off with uh, our three uh, little apostrophes going into an R in the squiggly brackets, and that denotes a set of R code. R Studio is going to run that as R code. When we render uh, or in traditional R Markdown, when we init, then it will run all those pieces of R code. If we uh, like, we can run them individually. And so this next section here 
is just telling us that just like with Markdown, it's a little play button here in the corner of each chunk. And so when we have a chunk, we can have it run as part of our whole document, but we can just run that section by itself. If we jump back to Studio, we can see here, here is that little play button. If I hit that, it will just run this piece of code. So we will hit it. Uh, and again, we generated an error. Uh, why did we generate the error? Because the GG plot, when we run a chunk of code, it doesn't know about when we ran this whole thing. So we need to make sure that we've run these library functions, and in particular, the tidyverse one. Then when we come back, and it has produced our plot. So play button has just run this chunk of code and really helpful for us when we hit error messages uh, that we can diagnose what's going on. And that's why I have included these. It's not just that I'm being a little bit obtuse today, uh, but because I wanted to show you if you were here for the first time and you went and hit that play button and said, what on earth is going on? Why doesn't it know what ggplot is? because we had not, uh, we'd not told it about our ggplot package, uh, which is part of Tidyverse. So a very convenient way to access a whole lot of those very useful packages is through Tidyverse. Okay, so that was our code chunk button. We can run that, just do that chunk of code, which in this case was our plot. Let's go back to our tutorial. So we can run code chunks. We can use markdown in order to do things like bolding and italics, or we can use the buttons that uh, Quarto adds, which is certainly very handy. Last bit here is just saying how it goes about producing the documents so that Unless you're really interested in the technicals, we probably don't need to worry about that. But we can jump over to our next section. Uh, we can have a look at some computations. Again, they give us an example to download. Okay, so now we've opened up our Quarto computations example. And we can see here that we have another plot that we are going to be doing. And when we jump over to Visual, we don't want to see that message again. Shows us the plot, which we can run that chunk. There is our nice looking plot. When we go to render, and we let it render, uh, something that we see here, and again, just for education purposes, it's gone and whacked this warning in the middle of my document, which is pretty annoying. I didn't want that. So we come back to our document and we can add warning false to our document. This works in our markdown as well. Anytime that we are seeing warning messages, and the reason for this warning message is that I've not updated to the latest version of R. So it is giving me a warning about the mismatch between what version it's expecting and what I'm using. So we add warning false. We render it again. And now we don't have the warning appearing in our document. So that's all pretty normal. Uh, these are things we have seen before. But there is some cool new additions that Quarto can do. So one of them is code folding. So when we do a document, traditionally we had to try and decide, do I want to include this code or not? If I'm producing this for a technical audience, maybe I do, otherwise I probably don't. And the way that I would show the code or not the show the code is with this echo. So I can have echo equals true or echo equals false. So if I have echo equals false, add that in there and run, we can see that that no longer shows the code, it only shows output. So echo is the option to show code or not show code. But instead of having 
just this echo yes or no. Instead, what we can do is we can add the option of code folding. So up at the top here, we can just add in a line and the, the lines we probably should have already had were for math and HTML. But the new one is this one code fold. So code fold true. When I now go and render this, you can see that here where I had my code, it's now shown as a box that I can pop out. So if I was using this perhaps as a technical document or for teaching, uh, and I particularly if I had a lot of code or the code uh, really would just dominate the page, I can have that as a fold out chunk. So that is really, really handy. If I'm producing uh, websites or I'm producing documents for people, I want them to be able to see the code, but I want, don't want the code to be filling up pages and pages. All I need to put is code fold true and I can fold the code like that. That is pretty cool. Okay, so next thing that we can have a look at is the code tool. So if we type in code, we'll notice there's actually a number of different pretty useful things there. So code line numbers is going to be pretty handy if we are teaching and we want to be able to show someone the code numbered by line. But the one that we are going to do right now is code tool. So we'll put that in as true, we will render up our document and we can see at the top of our document, we now have show all code, hide all code. So we could have taken our code fold out if we'd wanted, but this just lets us show and hide all of them. So that's pretty basic, uh, probably not quite as exciting as the code fold. Okay, so coming back to the tutorial document, we've had a look at code folding, certainly really handy. Now, code linking in principle sounds fantastic, but I couldn't actually get it to work. And I have tweeted to Quattro, uh, but it seems that it's not quite as simple as just throwing code link true into the top of your document as we see here. Uh, they do mention the need for the downlink package, and when I communicated with them, they also said XML2 is important. Uh, I've installed both of those, still couldn't get this to work, so I am still trying to figure it out. I will do a separate video on code linking. Basically, the idea, though, is that the code will be set as hyperlinks that will hyperlink to the relevant help pages or websites that... Uh, for that code. So for example, you can see here they have theme minimal and it will hyperlink to the themes page for ggplot2. So that certainly seems really helpful, uh, but looks like the implementation not quite there yet. Next up we have figures and this is also really good. The figures and when we see the referencing shortly, they are some of the things that I think is really going to make Quarto much more useful as a document writing tool. So here for our figure, we can set a label, set a caption. We can set alternate text, which is really helpful for making accessible documents. We can also set the width and height for our, uh, for our figure as well. If we want to be able to cross-reference, then using that label within text, and we can see here, so at fig-scatterplot, because that's what it was labeled, will allow us to refer and then cross, have a cross-reference, so a link between the figure label and the figure itself. So those are really neat. I'm not going, not going to just copy and paste all of this over. Uh, you can certainly try this yourself, but I would... Definitely recommend having a look at this because I think this is really powerful. Also useful, being able to put multiple figures on the page side by side. So we can see here, layout, in col, two. So we've set two columns. Uh, we've got two figure subcaptions for the two figures. We've got an overall caption. We've got our two GG plots. 
we come down we have a look what it's done and this is fantastic this is something that i think people have wanted uh, and i'm sure that you probably could force our mark down to do it but it's just done so simply so we've got our two side by side figures each has their own caption we have a caption underneath it's all cross reference very very cool stuff so last bit here uh, inline code so as with our markdown we can just use our little marks there with an r and we can do a computation within line and that's very much like our markdown so that that's not that's not really something that's particularly new we can also create some figures in a chunk so here we've calculated a couple of means within a chunk and then later on refer to them as well so we can see there we've just said r mean underscore cty so mean of city uh, and there it is there from the previous chunk so also pretty handy bit of info here about caching uh, probably not super relevant for most people if you're working with um, very big data or things that are slow to execute or I guess if it's a very very long document uh, then this would be useful so sending a cache so that it's not having to recreate everything okay so let's jump to the final tutorial which is authoring and again they have a authoring file for us to download the format options we went through earlier so this is when we want to create a new document so file new file quarto document and we can choose what we want and there's that authoring document if we would like it I'm going to go through this one fairly quickly uh, there's a couple of couple of really handy bits and pieces that we will spend most of our time on uh, so we can set up other options so code line numbers i think i mentioned earlier pretty nice one we can put that up the top and so when we are producing our document uh, it will give us our code line numbers we can come down and see the example here really nice for technical documents also really nice for teaching documents where we can see the line numbers but just for the code and then if we need to refer to them we can just refer to that particular line nice nice and simple something that i think is maybe useful certainly i've had some instances where this would have been helpful is multiple formats so they've got the example here uh, of making a html and a docx uh, could possibly be a pdf as well and just within our top of our document uh, we can just set up multiple different formats uh, I haven't experimented yet I had tried this previously with our markdown it's possible but I found it was a little bit of a headache I also found that some code and elements particularly tables would behave very differently in the HTML than they would in the docx and the PDFs I've not yet experimented here to see whether it is improved uh, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed because that's certainly something to look out for uh, and that I think it would come up more often because instead of doing simultaneously the two documents I would be doing one and then trying to convert it over to the other okay so we've looked at rendering jump down to our next bit sections so earlier we saw how we've got that outline and we can actually set up sections so if you were using this for a very long document maybe it's a thesis maybe it's some sort of white paper then we can set up sections and then headings within the sections and so we can just see here numbering the sections and again just follow following through this uh, we will be able to produce a nicely numbered document something that's going to have a nice table of contents nice way for us to be able to navigate through 
Next up, we have equations. So with uh, Markdown, we were always able to insert uh, LaTeX mathematical equations, and we can continue to do that here. We can see that if we go insert anything, then we can set up to use LaTeX. If you've never used LaTeX before, uh, it takes a little bit of getting, getting used to. Uh, we've got a no, very nice example here, though, where when we're referring to particular elements of an equation, um, they are all just coded in. So our Greek letters, uh, any, any uh, italics, hats, uh, bars, things like that, um, dealing with fractions, summations, subscript, superscript, all, all done via these slash signs. Uh, and so you, there's plenty of good documentation. Uh, I guess thinking about someone I did masters with, uh, he went and Googled LATEX uh, without really specifying maths or some other qualifier and was a little bit shocked by what he found in Google. So if you are searching for LATEX, I would probably add maths or equations or something to like that to your search string. Okay, last thing we're going to look at, and you'll notice there's a few that we are not going to dive into. Uh, last one we will look at is citations. This is really pretty handy. So this is going to let us insert citations much more easily. Um, is it as good as using Zotero or EndNote within Word? Not sure yet. I've only had a look at it in the tutorial, and I think it's one of those things where when you're writing a long document, that's where you start to realize how good or bad this is. Uh, but certainly at face value, this looks really, really good. So insert anything tool, again, choose citation, and then we can grab our citation information from, uh, it could be something like Zotero, uh, places like PubMed, Crossref, and hopefully just get a nice, clean, well-presented citation into our document. Once we've got it in there, you can see that we can refer in text just with our square brackets. So we've added this uh, Nuff 1984, uh, and then in our references section, there is our nicely formatted citation. So it still looks like it's a little bit of work, not fully automated, um, but looks like it's going to be much easier than doing it manually. Okay, so there's a few other sections here. I'm not going to get into uh, too much. We'll go down to learning more, uh, and we can see that they talk about more specialized things, so doing presentations, websites, and so on. Uh, I'm new to this, just like you are, and so this has been me working through this tutorial and really just getting a first feel for the software. As I learn more and as I start to apply it to specific things, I will probably make some more videos just talking through the process, uh, showing things that I have learned. Um, but for those of you just starting out, quarto.org, hit the get started, download. It's uh, really quick and easy to install and certainly pretty easy to get started. Probably a few little tricks to learn if you're doing big documents, uh, but outside of that, I think this is pretty cool. I've seen a few people on Twitter already saying how they are converting uh, their course documents and their shared, shared writing materials over using it. 